Hey, Christian Faith Center. Um, I know, unexpected, unannounced. <laughs> Here I am. Um, it's Independence Day weekend. And um, last Thursday, I did uh, a teaching and the file got corrupted. Very interesting. So I just want to share a little bit about me. <laughs> And when the enemy tries to bring something that is um, a resistance, um, something he's pushing away, a ministry that I'm doing, I persist and I do not give up. And this is the victory in the battle. It's when you get uh, something comes against you and says you can't do it. Um, a technology file is corrupted. Uh, I say, well, then I'll do it again. And we're going to go back to square one and we are going to uh, go over this message. So interestingly, this message, I heard from the Lord that it was, um, it was victory over anxiety. Um, so here we are. Um, now, I recorded that message last week because I was away on Thursday evening and then Tabitha placed it into the live stream and all of our devices or our ways of going live. And uh, yeah, the file just kind of uh, didn't work. So um, here we are. And um, I just want to start by um, reading Jesus' own words. So here they are. From Revelation 1, verse 18. When I saw him, this is John speaking about Jesus, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. Do you need to hear this tonight? I certainly do. Do not be afraid. And you know, since I um, started doing this, um, this uh, study, uh, so many people, so many people are under an attack of anxiety. Um, it says in Luke, Jesus says that men's hearts will fail them because of fear. Are, are we seeing that? Um, not necessarily people who are losing their lives because of fear, but they're losing their heart, their their courage, their boldness, their, their want to move forward into the land, to take the land, the enemy's territory. They're losing heart. And I don't mean just men. I'm talking about all of mankind. And so let's listen to what Jesus says right here in Revelations 1 verse 18. Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and now look, I'm alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and hell. This is your savior. He went down into hell and he took the keys of death and hell from our enemy. The one who's constantly trying to deceive, to accuse, and to take your joy, your peace, and your revelation of righteousness. He doesn't do it by a weapon. He does it by deception. Jesus took his ability to hurt you. He has taken all ability, all weapons the enemy have has to take from you. The de devil, devil wants to come and see what he can devour. It is up to you and me. And know this, that all authority has been given to Jesus Christ in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. All authority. There are only two people, two uh, types <laughs> that have authority. Jesus Christ himself, given to him by God the Father, and us as we use his name to clean up the spiritual atmosphere, to lay hands on the sick and steal back from the enemy any health that's been taken, to take back that sickness and discard it. We have the authority to do that. The enemy 
has no authority over you to bring anxiety. It's a good word. Um, and it is a word that we need to uh, look into, practice. As I said before on the first 10 minutes that we had actually live on Thursday, um, he wants to come and steal your peace, your joy, and your righteousness. Because all three of these are the kingdom of heaven in you. In you. So here it is, First Peter 5, verse 6. This is from NIV. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand. Didn't Jesus just place his hand, his right hand, on John? Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. He doesn't just care for you. He takes the cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. If you're undergoing anxious thoughts, so are all the other believers in the world. They're having invitations to be filled with anxiety. And it says, The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. And Peter says right there, amen. <laughs> mic drop. <laughs> he drops the mic and he says, done deal. Um, this is such an anointed passage of scripture. Um, you can sense Peter's um, knowing that this is truth and this is how you handle anxious thoughts. This is the way you do it. Peter was not, um, um, uh, he, he didn't uh, not know anxiety. Uh, the night uh, before Jesus was crucified, he went through horrible anxiety, so much to the point that he denied Jesus three times. And uh, and then, of course, Jesus redeemed those three times by asking him three times, will you feed my lambs? Do you love me? And, and Peter was able to do that. But then came the day of Pentecost when Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. And that is who you are. You are filled with the indwelling of the Godhead, the one who moves you into boldness and confidence, away from fear, away from anxiety, away from that chaotic thinking that bombards you where you can't seem to focus when that anxious storm hits you. This is who you are. You have the Holy Spirit inside you. Do you not know that you are now a temple of the Holy Spirit? He has made his home in you. And you now have this revelation that Peter is sharing with us. So let's go through this revelation piece by piece and really break it apart. I'm going to share with you that this is, uh, I had an anxiety invitation, as I'm sure you have had in the past as well. And that anxiety came to me and it was, uh, it was a fearful thought about a loved one. And I said, Lord, I need your help on this. It's a broken record that just keeps going over and over and over. And it's inside my head and I need to get out. Um, from under this thing. And so the Lord sat me down in his presence and he had me open up the word of God, which is anointed to bring life to every situation that brings anxiety. It is anointed to bring a shepherd counsel from the Holy Spirit. The word of God is alive and active. It is a discerner of your emotions and your spirit man, which is completely free. Your spirit man is born again of the same spiritual DNA as God himself. You are now called a beloved child of God, made in his image. 
The Holy Spirit speaks over you. You are God's poetry, a recreated people. And the word of God sets free the power and the freedom of the anointing that is all over your Holy Spirit, (laughs) your Holy Spirit. You've been holy, made holy, righteousness of God. The spirit inside you is free and whom the Son has set free is free indeed. It's your spirit that can rise up with wings like eagles, that can run and not grow weary, can walk and not faint. Your spirit man is well able to conquer this attack on your life. And the word of God is the key that unlocks the anointing. So this is what God showed me. First Peter chapter 5. We head to first 6 and let's start right there. There. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Number one, bow. Bow before the Father of love, the Father of glory. I don't know how you see yourself bowing, but I want you to also see your inner man bowing, leaning over, stretching out before the Father, letting go with these really tough hands, these this, these hands that have great ability to change your circumstance. You release your ability before the Father. Hallelujah. I'm going to read what I wrote down in my journal in that moment when he was speaking to me about this. Acknowledge the power and authority of God. He is God. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. You're not the finisher. And the word of God, God's word, is God. Jesus Christ is the word. He became flesh And so when you speak the word, that word comes over you as you bow over. And just as Jesus spoke in Revelations 1.18, his great hand of ability is on your back. His character flows from his heart in that moment. His ability comes over your weak ability as you lay it before him. You know, our will is so interesting, and God does not supersede our will. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven is the most beautiful prayer. Jesus knew it, and he taught us to speak it. Because as we lay down our will, it is an open door for Jesus Christ, the Father, the power and the authority, Holy Spirit movement to come over you. His loving kindness rests on you. His faithfulness rests now on you. His authority rests upon you heavily. His ability, where your ability isn't enough, it's so important for you to unlock the door with your mouth and say, I humble my ability before you, Lord, and I receive your loving hand on me heavy and well able to rescue me out of this environment. I'm going to read a couple scriptures about this bowing low. Ephesians 1, 2, we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, covered with his loving kindness. May the heavenly father of our Lord Jesus Christ release grace over you and impart total well-being in your lives. Ephesians 1, 7, you are washed over with the cascading riches of his grace. Paul teaches us that his grace is his strength made perfect in our weakness. We take refuge in the shadow of his wings. 
this moment of ca- of just releasing our ability to the Lord, it's just letting go and bowing before His presence, is Psalm 91. I dwell in the secret place of the Almighty under the power of El Shaddai. I rest in His under His wings. I say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my rock, in whom I trust, rely upon, and lean upon. He will deliver me. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm is being lavished on you as a love gift. This is what this scripture opens up, and Peter knew it. It's the key to releasing the beginning of that total victory over anxiety, and that is humbling yourself, taking your pride, your um, capable ability to fix this situation, your control. And that's the main thing. We'll get on to that with that next verse. Let me finish reading this. He sees us wrapped in Christ. Do you understand that? He sees you perfect, not because you are perfect. And really, that's what we are releasing in that humility. Our perfectness, (laughs) our ability to do this thing so well, we let it go. And he sees us wrapped in the perfection of the anointed one. We let go of every wound that has pierced us and the sin we so easily fall into. Hebrews 12, 1. Letting go of the wounds. So often, you know, holy ground is about releasing the sandals that God told told Moses to take off. Take off your sandals for you are standing on holy ground. It's those sandals that have covered our wounds. The sandals in your heart that have covered the trauma, the abuse, the the not being enough, the words spoken over you as a child that you always mess up. The sandals that are over those things say, I will never mess up. I will never let someone hurt me again. I will never allow myself to enter into a situation where I'm not in control. In the presence of the Father, we release, we unlatch those sandals, and we are safe because He sees us wrapped in Christ, and we let go of every wound that has pierced us and the sin that we so easily fall into. Jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the tree. He absorbed your sin. In this moment, you let all of your sin be absorbed by Christ. It is his joy to do this. It is his feeling of, they're receiving my sacrifice. All the work I did on the cross is now being absorbed and received. Yahweh laid the guilt of our sin on Jesus. 1 Peter 2.24 and Isaiah 53. My covenant of peace with you will never be shaken, says Yahweh, whose love and compassion will never give up on you. This is the character of God. When Jesus saw the masses of people hurting, it was his compassion and his mercy that moved him to heal all who were oppressed of the enemy. This is our God. He's not saying you're messing up, get it right, get in line, check the boxes. He's saying lay down all this so I can put my loving hand on you, my mercy, my compassion my ability to fix this situation. And this last scripture, by the way, that last one was Isaiah 54, verse 10. This last one is from Song of Songs. It's a beautiful scripture. We rarely uh, quote it. Song of Songs 8.3. His left hand cradles your head while his right hand holds you close. Amen. These are scriptures that are alive and active when you humble yourself before your mighty God so that he can exalt you. It means so he can lift you up. 
The next scripture is super important. Cast your anxiety on him because he cares for you. I'm going to read that from the Passion Translation. Pour out all your worries and stress upon him and leave them there. For he always tenderly cares for you. <laughs> Cast your care. I've shared with this with some precious friends recently. I've been having to practice this every single day. You know, when we cast our care, we're casting out our ability to latch on, like a fishing pole, <laughs> hook on the answer to our trouble. So have you ever done that? You're, you're trying, you keep trying to get that control over the situation, whether it's a person, whether it's your time, whether it's a, a financial need, you're just trying to grab the ability to get control over that situation and that continuous casting and not hold getting a hold of that thing is anxiety. You know, anxious people are not, uh, uh, they're not ones that are, are you know, um, very intelligent, <laughs> let's say. Um, anxious people are kings, royalty, you and I. And I'll tell you why, because they have dominion and they have abilities and they have the ability to change the atmosphere. There's a great story. I love telling this because I remember this story so well about a king on a mountain and here he is in his castle and oh, so glorious and wonderful. And there's a peasant who is in the fields low before him and the peasant's looking up at the king and the king saying, oh, if only I was a king, I would have so much. Whatever I wanted, I would have so much authority. And then we cut to <laughs> the king up in the castle filled with cares, filled with worries, filled with wondering how to rule his kingdom and make the right choices. And he's looking down at the peasant saying, ah, to live that life where all I would care about is to, is to push the plow and make a hole in the ground and then go home and have no cares or worries about ruling my kingdom. So if you're anxious, count yourself royalty, <laughs> because you have the ability to take dominion over your atmosphere. But the Lord is saying through these scriptures to us, I want you to cast the care of your kingdom over to me. All your ability, all your strengths, all your great accomplishments you've done in the past, cast them to me. And then that beautiful way, he says, I will care for you. So he's going to take all those things, the perfect king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords is going to take all those things and he's going to care for them for you. Be well balanced and always alert because your enemy, the devil, roams around incessantly like a roaring lion looking for its prey to devour. Take a decisive stand against him and resist his every attack with strong, vigorous faith. This is essential to the attack of anxiety. You need to recognize you have an enemy you need to recognize that his uh, weapon is not uh, in the natural. It is deception 100% all the time. He's going to try to get you to align with his lie. Also, you have to figure out the end game of your enemy. He doesn't care if you get anxious or if you cry or if you scream out or you yell at him or you're angry it's like a two-year-old you have you have to understand as long as you're interacting and he has a reaction from you and he has taken the peace of god that is promised to you as long as he's trying to take any joy from you he's good because that's his end game as long as he's taking your revelation of righteousness he's good 
That's his end game. His absolute end game is to take faith in God from you. Anything he's working on in your life is to take faith in God from you. So sometimes when I am in that place where I understand that there's a heaviness, there's an anxiety coming, there's a a fierce um, negative vibe (laughs) um, heading my way, um, uh, I go to James 4. I submit to God, I resist the enemy, and he flees. And the heaviness is still there. (laughs) I'm resisting the devil. Lord, I'm submitting to you. I'm resisting the devil. Why am I still under this heaviness, this heavy feeling? And I can't seem to get this tiny record um, to stop repeating itself. This scratched record. Keep on repeating a lie that has latched hold of my emotions. I'm resisting the enemy, Lord. I resist you, enemy. I resist you. So this is what the Lord told me. Um, To resist the enemy, you do not line up with any part of his character. Let me read to you something I found. Um, The devil is a liar. Amen. It says that in John 8, verse 44 from Jesus. My choice is to be a person of truth. And when we're not people of truth, it opens the door to all sorts of anxiety. What did I tell that person? I got to I gotta figure out what I said. Uh, and it puts you in a very small place of thinking when you don't tell the truth. A very small place. Be a person of truth. His truth sets you free. He speaks truth over you. Be a person of his truth. And that means speaking the truth of the word of God in every moment. Speaking his truth over you, not a deceptive lie. You don't speak sickness over yourself. You don't speak lack over yourself. You don't speak accusations and condemnations over yourself. You speak the truth of the word of God and you will be free lining yourself up. The enemy wants to kill, John 8, 44. That is also one of his goals. Kill, steal, destroy. And so we must walk in the newness of life. We don't speak. My feet are killing me. Innocent as it may be. We don't speak death. That's not what we do. It'll bring you out of any atmosphere of anxiety if you are a speaker of the newness of life. He wants to destroy. You are one to build up. If you're constantly bringing down people, bringing down ministries, tearing down other people, speaking evil, speaking anger, making sure you get on the internet and let people have a piece of your mind, anxiety, I assure you, will be a part of your daily equation. He wants to destroy. You build up. He wants to steal. You be a giver. (coughs) Excuse me. We're givers. We give. We're not afraid. He is an accuser. You refuse to gossip. (coughs) Well, something in my throat here. All right, enemy. No stealing the words from my mouth. He wants you to be unequally yoked. You choose not to tie yourself to a relationship with an unbeliever. (coughs) <coughs> having anxiety in business sometimes means you've chosen to yoke yourself in business with an unbeliever and they're letting anxiety into the door or fear into that business or any other relationship. He sows bad seed. You sow good seed. He tempts people. You help them to choose to do good. He's an oppressor. You be a servant. Freedom. He's a hinderer of ministry. You be a facilitator of ministry. 
He takes the word away from people's hearts. You put the word of God in people's hearts. A fantastic, practical way to resist the enemy and he flees. He doesn't want to have any part of you because as you do all these things and line yourself up with God's truth and his ways and his character, you are powerful in the spirit. Your light begins to shine on top of a mountain and nothing will quench it. Praise the Lord. We resist the enemy and he flees. I wanted to tell you a funny little story. The devil roams around incessantly like a roaring lion looking for its prey to devour. So my little dog is a chihuahua mix, very little. And every time I eat, it's annoying as anything. And I'm trying. But every time I eat, she's right beneath me. Just in case I drop a little something whether it's under the table or in the kitchen making food or whatever. She's just there. And I got to thinking the enemy's like that. He's like that. He's just waiting for that opportune moment so he can devour what you've let loose of. If the devil can't steal your joy, he can't take any of your goods. Amen? If he can't take your peace and your knowledge of who you are in Christ, he can't do anything. He can't devour one part of your life. He's not allowed. You are perfectly protected. If you open the door to any of those things I just read, that you align yourself with him in any way, he does have access to come in and take away the kingdom of heaven's beautiful, uh, what we eat and drink, peace, joy, and righteousness. Amen. This next section of this scripture that Peter is teaching us is so important. For you know that your believing brothers and sisters around the world are experiencing the same kinds of troubles you endure. And then after your brief suffering, the God of all loving grace, who has called you to share in his eternal glory in Christ, will personally and powerfully restore you and make you stronger than ever. So let's head back to remembering you are not alone. One of the main things that the enemy wants to do in these anxious attacks is to convince you you've been abandoned, you have been um, set apart into a deserted place, um, you are all alone in your suffering. You're the only one who understands it. You're the only one who needs to go through it. And then the other thing is that he wants you to hide the weakness. How could you be so afraid of that? Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody that you're concerned about this spiritual part of your walk. You're concerned about this person because you don't want to look weak. <clears throat> You're all by yourself. But Peter teaches us here that your brothers and sisters around the world are experiencing the same kind of troubles that you are enduring. Find other believers. Confess to them. It's interesting when you do open your mouth and say that the broken record, that scratched record, when you speak it out, how little power, how much less power it has than when it was in your ear, in your head, playing over and over. And you actually hear yourself to say, well, wait a minute, do I really believe that? Is that something that really has a hold on me? And another believer might also say, hey, I'm going through the same thing. Oh, it feels so good. You can go shoulder to shoulder into the battle together, texting one another, praying with one another, communicating. Let's, oh, we're getting through it. Oh, you're getting through it? Oh, I had a victory today. Oh, I didn't have a victory. Let's get through this shoulder to shoulder. Or they've already been through it. And they'll come back to you and you, they'll say, I know you're in the battle right now. I know you're in the anxious battle concerning your health. I know you're in it. I've been there. I've been there where the doctors and the words and everything's like a storm and, and the waves are so high. I don't know what is up and what is down. That's when you go to another believer 
and you say, okay, come back and, and help me walk through this. And they do. They bend to the other side. They give you hope. And they're able to tell you, I've, I've, I've got victory over that. I understand. It's such a beautiful thing when you have a testimony and you can share with another person, hey, I, I know how you felt in that. This is why we have the most amazing Messiah. He knows what it feels like to be betrayed. He knows what it feels like to be hungry, to be in pain. He knows what it feels like to have the sun set and the darkness roll in. He knows what it feels like to have a hard time sleeping. We have an amazing Savior that we can go to and say, Lord, I'm feeling this. And he'll say, I understand. What a beautiful plan. What a planner. God is so faithful in every respect to meet us in that weakness and walk us through. One thing I did uh, forget to mention about resisting the enemy, the Lord spoke to me. I said, ah, oh, resisting the enemy, Lord. He says, think of it this way. Work like you do in the gym. Uh, with resistance training, whether it's with your own body weight, weights, or resistance bands, resistance training builds a muscle. You can have all the protein and the good food, but you need to work the muscle. So we work our faith muscle when we resist the enemy. The way to work your faith muscle is to do this. Stand against him and resist his every attack with strong, vigorous faith. Strong, vigorous, alive faith. That's when you say, even, say the word, even when you don't see it. It's when you speak out the uh, desired outcome. It is having faith in what God said. You know, the Lord told me during that emotion, that uh, anxiety storm, he said, Teresa, I've told you something about this situation, haven't I? I said, yes, Lord, I, uh, I remember you said this. And he said, don't disrespect me by taking my word lightly. Wow, that really entered my heart. Don't disrespect God by taking his promises lightly in the battle when you're when all you see is negative things don't take lightly his word it is a heavy thing it is a powerful force and his word changes atmospheres you just keep at it with strong vigorous faith and in the end it says right here you will be stronger than ever this is who we are this is the God we serve. This is the battle we fight. It is standing. When we have done all, we have lined up with God. We have lined up with the word. We've believed every word he said. You know, Jesus said, your work on earth is to believe in the one who God sent. Your work is done believing. You don't need to be perfect checking off all those things. Your work is done believing. Do you know that when that moment comes and Jesus Christ is waiting for you as you breathe the first breath of heaven, what a glorious moment. He is going to tell you, well done, good and faithful servant. Why? Because you've done all the work. You believed. That's your work. One little thing I want to address in this scripture. After your brief suffering, I said, Lord, no, you bore my grief and you carried my sorrows. <laughs> I don't want to carry suffering. What are you talking about here? A brief suffering? Ah. Oh. He says, sometimes when you go to the gym, it's a little bit like suffering, isn't it? <laughs> I said, yes, it is. It does not feel good, does it? And sometimes the day after, it doesn't feel good. The brief suffering is just like that. It's brief and the suffering is standing. He doesn't put you through these battles. It's You're going through and you're getting to be a warrior of Christ. You're understanding more in those battles about who God is 
and what he's provided for you on this earth. They're exciting. I had a a woman of God who I highly respected, a mentor, very early in my walk. Sean and I were believing for a very big financial thing for us. And right now, in hindsight, it wasn't that, that big. But, you know, little by little, we were believing for a big financial thing. And she said to me with an ear to ear grin, how exciting you get to use your faith. And really, that's what Jesus is about to. All right, I'm here with you. I've never left you. I'm Jehovah Shammah, the God who is always present. He never leaves you. You have other believers who've been through it, and you're going to get through this. And not only are you going to get through it, let me read the promise about you getting through it. The God of all loving grace. Oh, his love. His love unlocks the whole solution. His loving grace. What is his grace? His power made perfect in your weakness, bowing down. Loving grace. He has called you to share in his eternal glory in Christ. He will personally, personally, he's a personal God. He's going to personally and powerfully restore you and make you stronger than ever. Yes, he will set you firmly in place. You're on that rock. You're above and not beneath. You are blessed. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not one of his benefits. He forgives all my sins. He heals all my diseases. He redeems me from the pit. He pulls me up onto the rock of salvation and crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercies. He renews my youth like the eagles. I run and do not grow weary. I walk and do not faint. This is the word of God. This is our God. This is who you are. Hallelujah. And he has all the power needed to do it. The enemy doesn't have power. Jesus Christ has all authority, all authority in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. He has all power. But in your resisting the enemy, in this situation, in this anxiety storm, in this resisting, you're going to come out stronger than ever. How beautiful and wonderful that is. Not only are you going to have victory over anxiety, you're going to be able to take other people's hands and walk them through this place. Jesus Christ is coming. He's coming soon. We're at the end of the end of days. He's coming. And Jesus warned us when he was walking the earth. He says, don't get heavy with the cares of this world. They will draw you down to the earth and you will miss my coming. Look up. The day of the Lord is near. Look up in victory. That's who you are. You're not weighed down by the cares of this world. You are stronger than ever as you come through these things, resisting the enemy and his lies. You're healed. You are restored, you are redeemed, you are delivered, you are filled with hope, you are the light of the world, because Jesus Christ is the light of the world who lives within you. You are victorious. And after your brief suffering, it's very brief, and if you have felt your anxiety has gone on way longer than brief, then you need to go to 1 Peter chapter 5. You need to start walking through these on a moment-by-moment level. I mean, this is sometimes that needs to happen every hour, every minute, every moment. Ah, Lord, I just took that care. I cast it. I lay down and humble my ability right now, my ability to be strong in this situation. I'm going to lay it down before you so that in due time, you can lift me Ah, this has been so good to be with you, friends. I've taken a little more time than I should have. (laughs) Blessings to you. May the God of all peace bless you and bring you well-being tonight. Go to 1 Peter 5. Meditate on the Word of God. Take these four steps and then, bam, number five. Brief suffering, boom, stronger than ever. All right. God bless you all. We'll see you at church.